I don't think people realize how big an undertaking it is, how you know, many people it takes to, to sort of achieve the level of quality and scope that we have. Assassin's Creed 3 is a big scale game. The amount of things that are produced per day, that are developed per day, it's amazing. The team has grown to be several hundred people in five studios around the world, all of them working on really specific elements, so the amount of work is just staggering. In total, it's over 30 hours of gameplay, and we have two hours and a half of cinematics, which is as much as any major night movie, or even more. We have an amazing team on AC3. Everyone's super passionate about the project. We really all work really hard together as a team, and I think everyone's pushing to ship an amazing game. The feedback we've been getting from fans, from critics, it's just driving everyone even more and more. When we started AC3, we knew it had to be big and ambitious and different. It would be a challenge because so many things Alex wanted to do didn't exist or weren't possible at that time. We took it on us to make it happen. Stuff like the snow for the seasons or the ocean, you just had to create it from scratch. It's very rare in your career that you get an opportunity to try and go for the gold medal, and we really felt like this was our shot at it. A lot of tired people on the floor right now, but a lot of happy, tired people. We've always tried to pick exciting periods in history then drop the player in, so they're exploring that time as well as our fictional story. Make ready, present. The American Revolution was a very pivotal time because the concept of self-government as opposed to being governed by royals, it was very radical for the era. It's a great setting for a game because there's high stakes. It was the founding of a nation. It was a time when an individual could make a difference. It was all or nothing. They had to win or die. The American Revolution begins as a dispute over taxes, and as it unfolds over the course of the 1760s and 1770s, it becomes a contest that eventually defines the modern conception of liberty. The themes that are present in the history, these ideas of power and slavery, of control versus freedom, are, are not just debates within the American Revolution, but also debates within the history of the franchise. The Revolutionary War was an incredibly brutal experience. If you think about these weapons, muskets and flintlock pistols, are they one-shot weapons? They're very inaccurate. Cannonballs were ripping off limbs. This is something you just don't really hear about in the history books and something we wanted to bring to life in the game. I think that the primary draw of the AC franchise is the fantasy of, of being an assassin. To be this guy that can sort of move in and out of public and private spaces, who has all of these different weapons and abilities at his command, that's part of the secret society. Connor is our new hero in Assassin's Creed 3. He's half British, half Mohawk. He's humble and more grounded to nature uh, type of person. We did a lot of research into Native American culture. We've recorded dialogue in their native language. The main character, he is half Kanyakehaga. He speaks Kanyakeha. Tonoshere. Tonoshere. It's not a very book language, it's more oral. My job is to make sure that their intonation is good and their pronunciation is on. Waskweni. Yatsotsita wando nehiwahi. Excellent. I loved it. And we've tried very hard to reflect their culture as accurately as possible. His name, Radun Hagedum. It refers to a life that is scratched, meaning that he had to struggle to survive. Connor, as a hero, is someone who sees himself as a defender of the people. He's more inclined to justice than revenge. One thing you declare our independence. Now, my friend, we must make it so. Connor's goal is to assassinate key historical figures at major battles, at major events during the revolution. He's a stealth operator. He can come out and viciously make a, a great kill. Then blend right back in. 
using your battle space around you. I mean, it's never you're, you're just standing there and box another guy. It's turning around, finding the object next to you, slamming on the guy's head, using the tools that you have as weapons to take out your enemies. It's unconventional. It's guerrilla warfare. If George Washington would have had Connor on his team, he wouldn't have needed many other people. Anvil Next is an engine that gives us the possibility to do things that were not possible to do before. The weather system, the seasons, the formable snow, bigger worlds in general, the ocean. It's the sum of three years of improvements that we've built upon. Brand new navigation system, brand new combat system, two and a half thousand characters on screen at any one time, being able to cut through interiors in the city. Anvil Next is a massive leap forward in terms of gameplay opportunities. Cliffs, trees, climbable stuff water that was pretty exciting but also very challenging. We've got the frontier as well. We've got two of our major cities, Boston and New York. Once we dug up maps from the period, we tried to match street for street or major avenue for major avenue. We recreated Boston and New York at about one to three scale. We set out with crazy ambitions for this game. And with Anvil Next, it brings the experience to a whole new level. The fascinating thing for us is that we can bring history to life. We can actually make it a place that's explorable and vibrant and real. We hope we're offering by far the biggest and best assassins yet.